Our next speaker for today is uh, Andrew Sack from UCLA, who will talk about the combinatorics of closet as a Hello, everybody, and thanks for having me. Uh, this is based on joint work with Sir and Lynn. Uh, and I also want to take uh, feedback, lots of questions, uh, you can do a presentation. If you ever need me to repeat something or go back, uh, I'd be very happy to answer uh, during the presentation. All right. So, I'm talking about the conventional of closer association. And so, at Nancy this is related to the association. So, the association was originally defined as a spell complex uh, by Stancho, uh, and it states lattice is isomorphic to uh, a set of bracketings of words on n letters ordered by reverse inclusion. Uh, so here I have the three dimensional association, so it's on five letters. And we can see that two vertices, uh, so each vertex is a uh, bracketing uh, of these five letters, which you can think of as if this is a non associative operation, like say, uh, uh, let's say composition uh, in a uh, homotopy uh, group before you quotient out by homotopy. Uh, and then we can move from one vertex uh, to another uh, by applying a single application of the associativity rule. Okay. And then about 10 years later, the association was realized as a convex polytope uh, by Heyman and Bill. So we're going to talk about post associated uh, and so we have to do some basics about post-sets. So here we're going to have P be a finite post-set. Uh, we say that a subset of P is convex. If whatever we have two things in that subset, we have everything in between them. Uh, and we say that a subset is connected if it's connected as a subset of a hot set. Uh, the other uh, a tube is proper if it's a proper subset of P. Uh, and a proper tubing is a set of proper tubes so that any pair of tubes is nested or disjoint, and any collection of disjoint tubes uh, does not form a reference cycle. And so here I have some examples of proper tubings, and I have some non examples. So you can see this one, we have the set one, two, four is not convex. Uh, here we have a directed cycle between 1, 3, and 2, 4. And here these sets are not disjoint, uh, but are also not active. Okay, any questions? Cool. So, uh, Gaussian defined the post set associated which is a uh, simple polytope whose state lattice is isomorphic to. The set of proper tubings ordered by reverse inclusion. And again, we can think of two vertices as being connected if we can move from one to the other by a more general lattice associativity. Uh, and what that looks like uh, in both cases is if we delete one tube and put it back in the other one. And what hopefully is clear is that post set associativity generalized associativity uh, when we take the post set to be a chain. In the most direct possible way, the tubes uh, look exactly like pairs of tubes. Okay. And just to really emphasize this as an interpretation of tubings, uh, here I have maximal tubing on this post set. And we can think of this as whenever we have a side tube tube, we should contract along that tube and take the resulting post set. So here we want to contract along AB to get this, and then we would contract along ABC to get this poset, and then along ABCD to get this poset, and then finally to get that. There's actually a very nice interpretation uh, of this in that we can think of the element of our poset as being like functions or operations with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Uh, and composing them gives us a new operation with multiple inputs and multiple outputs. Uh, people who study homotopy theory and maybe Gothic could explain this better than I could. Uh, I have gotten an approved phrase from someone who studies this, which is that uh, post-set associated form an operand that encodes homotopy properties. 
Now, I don't know what all of those words mean, but I've got a thumbs up from Dasha and so. Uh, regardless, this is uh, one nice reason to study uh, the cities beyond them just being interesting for our objects. Okay. And one question that I get a lot uh, is what kind of objects can we substitute in here? Uh, of course, I just said some sort of homotopy reason, but one thing that uh, is a bit more familiar to me and maybe to some others is something that makes a lot of sense is uh, Legos. Uh, and so you can actually view a final Lego product like here uh, as being the word, the post that we want to make, and the instruction booklet for how to build the Lego up to some uh, equivalence is the, ver the vertex of the post association. And this is a very nice model to think of how to This is actually the exact same. Uh, this, this Lego would correspond to the post set that we saw on the previous slide. And this instruction booklet corresponds to that too. Okay. So, uh, one of my results that I talk about today is a realization of post-it associated future. So if I was to show that these were convex polytopes uh, by doing seller subdivisions of the polar dual, but uh, I provided an explicit realization. So I want to talk about this today. Uh, so here, uh, for a post set, we can find the order cone as the set of order preserving maps from the post set to R. And then we have this extra little funny condition, which says that all the coordinates sum to zero. Uh, or we can think of this uh, in maybe a more uh, natural way as being modular continent shifts. So here's a point in the order cone of this poset. And what this mod condition means is if I slide the entire picture up or down, it's still the same. Thing. Okay. So here we have a very special function that matters to this realization. Uh, which is linear functional defined for any subset tau of our process. And all that it is is a sum of the uh is it, sorry, the difference of the coordinates, I'm sorry, a sum of differences of the coordinates uh, of the cover relations that lie inside that subset. And then for a fixed positive constant C, the order polytope uh is the set where we take uh, alpha of the entire coset to be equal to this constant. Okay. If you've seen the order polytope before, this might look totally different from how you've seen it. Um, so Stanley's order polytope uh, has C equals to one and also requires a trajectory transformation to get one to the other, but a lot of the properties that we know and love uh, are still preserved. This is a slight, general, a slight generalization uh, because uh, this would also, in some sort of polytope, we dealt with uh, bounded process. These do not have to be bounded, meaning they don't have to have any upper and lower bound. It's just a slightly more general setting. So here we can see a vertex in the order polytope, which is just when we have as many things as equal as possible. Uh, without everything being equal. Uh, one thing that I want to point out about this function alpha is that on the order cone, this is a non-negative sum because Tj is always bigger than Ti. Okay. So uh, here we define the diameter of T relative to a subset S as just the uh, maximum distance between the coordinates uh, coming from S. So S is a subset T. Uh, so this is. This is the diameter as a subset of R if we just take those coordinates. And the reason that we care so much about alpha is that uh, we have this really key lemma, which says that alpha is a decent approximation for the diameter of a two cap, the specific two to two, uh, up to some uh, factor, but it's a constant factor if we consider the post So, uh, Galashin originally described posted associated hedra as alternative compactifications of the interior of the order polytope. So, uh, compactifying the order polytope normally might be very silly, it's a compact step. Uh, but what we want to think is that in the order polytope, when our uh, coordinate one and coordinate three are uh, infinitesimally close together, that just means that. 
But in the positive symmetry figure, what we want to do is we want to take this two saying that one, two, three are infinitesimally close, and then we zoom in and say within this, two and three are infinitesimally close. And we do the same thing for the full type six, which is as far as possible, and this represents a vertex in the positive symmetry region. Now, this is a little bit hand wavy. It is made precise uh, in the paper. Uh, but for us, it's enough to think that we are thinking of these as being if it has been close and then if it has been close. Okay. So now we're able to realize uh, posted associate So here we have, and these have intersection half spaces. Uh, so our half spaces are where this alpha uh, overall sweeps out uh, to represents a, uh, a facet is uh, greater than or equal to n to the two to the power of half. And what we're really doing here is we're replacing this concept on the previous slide of being infinitesimally close and infinitesimally closer, which in my head is a little hand uh, with being exponentially close and exponentially closer. Because for a tube uh, of a given size, it's uh, a smaller tube with coordinates inside of Infinitesimally that are exponentially closer together inside of the group. Uh, and then uh, a theorem of mine says that this does in fact give us a uh, realization of process of Sophia. And here we can see the realization for this process. I think it looks very good. Okay. So I'm going to very quickly go over the proof idea of uh, this theorem. So there's a couple um, along the list, but the main ones say that if I have some collection of tubes that don't form a proper tubing, then they don't give us some extra vertex. They don't lie. Uh, the intersection would not lie inside of the polytope. And the second one says that if we have a collection of vertices that do lie, uh, that do form a proper tubing, uh, or specifically a vertex, then they lie in the interior. Uh, of all of the tubes. So things behave like this. Uh, so for the moment, the idea here uh, that we can really think about is uh, for these half spaces, or for these hyperplanes, uh, this is saying that the coordinates inside of the tube tau uh, are exponentially close together, but it's uh, as far as the diameter is concerned, it's also saying that they're not too close together. And uh, here, the problem that we end up getting is that if we have a collection of tubes that don't form a tubing, so we have some sort of uh, thicklet uh, in the traditional tubes or something that are connected, this ends up making the coordinates inside of these tubes too close together. Uh, and then they end up lying outside of the positive region. And for the next lemma, uh, what this is saying is that things are actually uh, close enough together that they behave as we want. I don't want to spend too much time, uh, but uh, this is what it's saying is that here, uh, if we're looking at A and B, the coordinates inside A and B uh, individually for A and for B are very close together. And the total sum of distances, the total diameter uh, among A and B is very large. So this means that inside of this, uh, the coordinates of A and B are actually far apart. So uh, if you go through and think about uh, what we really need to show this thing uh, is a realization of positive sociohedra, uh, this idea of proofs. And the idea of each of these proofs is uh, actually basically doing estimates. Uh, like you were in undergraduate analysis. Okay, now let's talk about some numerous and numerous. So as we've seen many times before, uh, the f vector of a polytope just counts the number of faces in each region. And sometimes during this class, we'll also want to talk about the f polynomial, which is just where we added z to the i next to each uh, x of i. Now, given a cosine, we can define the comparability graph, uh, which uh, is defined on the same set as the coset and where two things are connected if they are comparable within the coset. Uh, now we have the theorem which says that two cosets 
that have isomorphic comparability graphs, uh, their post dissociative behavior have the same F factor. Uh, a property that only depends on the comparability graph of the post set is called a comparability pairing. So, another way we can phrase this is that the post dissociative F factor is a comparability pairing. Now, you might be saying, that, okay, they have the same F factor. Why don't we just show that they are conventional equivalent polyposts? Uh, but there we go. Uh, unfortunately, it isn't the case. So we see that uh, these two posets have the same uh, comparability graph, uh, but they're not combinatorial equivalents. Does anybody see why they're not combinatorial equivalents? Exactly. Uh, so the bottom one is the chromatic region, or I should really say, this isn't the actual realization we get. The real realization of this one was too ugly. Uh, so I want to make it more obvious, uh, but yes. Uh, and in fact, this holds for an infinite family. Uh, we have infinitely many polygons that uh, have the same F vector as uh, chromatic hedra, but are not chromatic hedra. Okay, so I want to talk a bit about the proof idea. Uh, and it really relies on this concept of autonomous subsets of a whole set. So uh, an autonomous sub, okay, so the definition here is a bit technical, but uh, the way that we want to think about this is that an autonomous subset of a post set is a subset uh, for which everything inside of a subset looks the same to everything outside of this subset. So if something uh, outside of the subset here, like 15, is comparable, is a bigger than something in the subset, it's bigger than everything in the subset. If it would be comparable, uh, then it would be comparable to everything in the subset, and so on. And so here we have this example. And for autonomous subsets, we can define what are called flips. Uh, and a flip just means turning that subset upside down. And a way to think about this condition, uh, the sort of technical condition, when it's written this way, uh, is that autonomous subsets are exactly the subsets for which it'll, it's very obvious, it makes sense to define exactly what a flip is. Unambiguously. Okay. There's a fantastic theorem uh, about comparability graphs, which says that if two postsets have isomorphic comparability graphs, then the postsets uh, are connected by a sequence of flips of a common substance. And what this theorem lets us do is it says if I want to show that something is a comparability invariant. I only have to show this uh, on that uh, the property can vary under flips of components. And so this is exactly what we do. And what's very nice is now uh, we can say that we get a bijective proof uh, about this factor. One thing I think I forgot to mention is that the number of tubes in a tube in uh, is the co dimension of the phase of the tubes. Uh, because of the physical jars and all the things. Okay. So we're going to define a map from a poset, uh, P prime is the uh, S flipped, uh, that's on the level of Cuban, and it's going to preserve the number of tubes in it. Uh, so here's the map. Easy, right? No. Don't worry, we're going to take it step by step. Uh, and we're really going to go through this just as an extended. So uh, the first thing that we define are good tubes and bad tubes. So a good, this is by the way, the good tubes and bad tubes from the tubing here on the left. So the uh, good tubes are the tubes that are either nested or disjoint with the atomic subsets. So here we can see we split into the bad tubes and the good tubes. Uh, now, what makes a good tube good? Well, oh, there's a typo here that should say T good, not too bad. Uh, but what we can see is that we can take the good tubes and put them directly on the E prime. So yeah, you can see in this picture, there's an upper set so you can see so you took the good tubes, put them directly on the E prime. And now it's left us to figure out how to move the bad tubes. 
Uh, and here's where it gets a little bit complicated. Uh, but let's make some observations about the band tubes. So uh, a lot of these are very easy to see, but every tube intersects S. Uh, the tubes slip into upper tubes and lower tubes. And each of the upper tubes and lower tubes form an S tube. Yeah? It's an excellent question uh, because if uh, you have something that is above the autonomous subset, then you're bigger than everything in the subset. If you're something below, that thing is lower than everything in the subset. And tubes have to be complex. And so they have to have the same condition. Yeah. Because I'm a major. Yeah. There's a great question. Okay. Any other questions? All right. So we have to figure out how to flip uh, the, the band tubes. So uh, what we do, we're going to focus for the moment on the lower tubes. And uh, in terms of method sequence, we're going to break it up into we call these decorated uh, rolling sequences and a middle sequence. And what this says is it's just the, the method sequence of the part outside of S and the sequence of things inside of S as we need to add them. And we have an extra condition where we mark them to the star if when uh, it when we take that element in the sequence, if we actually added something from that. So the first two in our method sequence is three six, and this is because we mark up the star because we add six. To get to three six from three, the next one we also mark with a star uh, because even though it's the same set in the uh, nested sequence, we also added five. The next one we also mark with a star, uh, but then the last one we don't mark it with a star because when we took four, we didn't actually gain anything from it, from us, and we just write these in order. Uh, we also have a special set M, which is the unused set uh, from S. So we can see these where the element sets that were not inside of any two. Now, this doesn't always exist. If it doesn't exist, we just don't worry about it. Uh, if it does, we need to mark it. And then uh, the next thing is we do this exact same process to the upper tubes that we did to the lower tubes. Uh, although okay, it, it's not a panic here because the middle tube only has one element, we actually want to write this backwards uh, for a technical reason. And then we combine it together. So what we uh, we call this the decomposition of the bad tubings into uh, these three sequences, the two of them being marked. Okay. Now, that we come to see composition, we're able to actually do the flip. The flip is very easy once we've done uh, this much work. We just write n backwards. Everything else is the same. And uh, this is the decomposition of uh, the bad tubes of the flip. And here, let me just do the process backwards to get uh, the bad tubes uh, in the image. And what's also very nice, what you might hope, is that if we perform this map uh, twice, we do go back to the original. Uh, so this is a bijection, and what we can also check, it's not too bad, is that this preserves the number of tubes. So this does give the quality uh, of the FF tube. Okay. Are there any questions? All right. Enough time. A few minutes. Awesome. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about some open problems. Uh, so I have a whole lot of them. All right. The first one is so this uh, operation, this uh, perfect thing is very nice, it's bijective, uh, it's a thin argument, but at the same time, it's kind of unsatisfying because while it tells us that uh, coset associated Hedra effector is the comparability invariant, it it really feels like if we have this, we should have a definition in terms of the comparability graph. So that makes it really obvious. Um, similar things, for example, happen for uh, the order polytope. Uh, if you're familiar with the order polytope, the chain polytope, 
uh, does what we would want here. Uh, and we also would like to know can this be made geometric? Is it about polytope after all? We've done this uh, very conventional argument. Can this be made geometric whatsoever? A problem that remains open for post-substitute features in general is to give a nice combinatorial interpretation of the H vector. Uh, and another question that we have is, is the H polynomial uh, always real? Uh, based off of computer evidence, this appears to be true. Uh, I tested this, I think, up to process size seven or eight, uh, and it appears to be true but I can't do it. And then one consequence of being uh, real rooted is that uh, there's this thing called the gamma vector, which the gamma polynomial is defined this way. I'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. Uh, would also have positive coefficients. We have what's called uh, gamma positivity. And if, so again, these uh, appear to be gamma positive uh, and we would like a combinatorial interpretation of the gamma vector. Uh, and a note here for people who care about gamma positivity is that not all cases of associated hedra are flag. Uh, so there's this big conjecture that flag simple polytopes are all gamma positive, which I believe Kareem uh, has a proof from that. But uh, not all of the flags, so it's still uh, interesting and still not proven. Uh, and uh, one other comment that I want to make is maybe we might go, or maybe this is the wrong direction to look, that based on this result of the comparability graph, maybe something involving uh, the gamma positivity or uh, the H vector should also be uh, defined from something comparable. Although my personal feeling is maybe not, but maybe I'm not sure. I just want to talk a little bit about. The gamma vector, gamma positivity, uh, in case you haven't seen this. So here is a specific uh, post set and the H polynomial from its post set is the And And uh, one way to think about the gamma vector is we take the H vector and we write it as uh, a linear combination of rows of uh, packed out triangles. And then the coefficients that we get are the gamma vector. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some specific uh, examples of post-sensitive to feature and what we do know about some of these questions in advance. So here we can define the cyclic fence, uh, which is a post that has alternating covering relations, and we also have this extra covering relation from one to the end. Uh, what's very easy to show using generating functions is that it has four to the end times two n to the end over three. And uh, if I was trying to come up with a uh, class of combinatorial objects that have this many things for each n, one thing that I think seems very natural is I'm going to take uh, balanced lattice hats and color each step red or blue. And so we can define a colored balance map exactly this way. Uh, what we can prove, uh, again, using generating functions, is that the H vector of uh, the six offenses is given by uh, the statistic that it counts the number of red peaks and that's number of peaks, and then we have to center this so that this is actually a possible statistic. And what we can show, so using variant functions, is that the gamma vector is 4 to the i times entry uh, This is actually another open question. We have uh, this equality uh, of these H vectors through using generating functions, but we don't have a digestive proof. And I spent a very long time trying to come up with this. So this is so much harder. It sounds easy, but so much harder than this thing. One thing that uh, might seem familiar with these numbers is uh, the uh, entry die squared uh, comes from the H vector of the type B associated. And in fact, you can see that the gamma vector then gets, uh, is the H vector of the type of the we plug in here. And this is known to be rerouted, and this uh, implies then that the gamma polynomial is rerouted, which then implies that the H polynomial is rerouted. Uh, so in this case, we know, and what makes this case interesting is that this is a class of non-flag polytopes. Right. 
we can also talk about the complete by car type graph. Uh, when we have the complete by type graph uh, K1N, this is the claw process, we get a committee fusion. And the committee fusion has a uh, famous conventional representation of its H vector and gamma vector, where the H vector is the number of permutations, HI number of permutations with I that sense. And the gamma vector is the number of permutations uh, without two descent in a row or five descent. We have a very similar story here, but where we have an extra restriction on the first and last element of the permutation. Uh, and we can also go over this for this class of our deaths. Okay. Uh, just to give a one line, one sentence statement about what's coming soon about uh, post set of feature. When we take uh, a post set of a rooted tree, uh, these are also known as opera keys, right? In this case, with their connection to the opera uh, then the one skeleton of these uh, post set of feature orients to a lattice. And this lattice generalizes both the tomorrow lattice and the, uh, the weekly lattice. All right. That's all I have. Thank you.